Okay, this video is for anybody that works in community theater and you're a lighting person and you have a light board that's getting old but you, and you'd like to replace it but you simply don't have the money to do so. Um, this is a great piece of software that I think you should take a look at and it's called Q-Light Controller Plus. Uh, the software is totally free although I do recommend you do uh, give a donation if you decide to use it uh, because it takes a lot of work to keep this up and um, running and up to date. But it's a great piece of software. I'm going to show you some of the features. You can go to uh, QLite, qlcplus.org and that'll get you to the website. There are Mac versions, Linux versions, and Windows versions. It work with virtually any Windows computer, 7, 8, uh, Windows 10. It doesn't have to be a very powerful computer either. either uh, most laptops and that will very, very easily run this program. Uh, the only other item you need to really put output DMX is you need to get yourself a, um, a USB or an ArtNet uh, DMX interface. Uh, two of them that I suggest is either going to DMXKing.com, get their Ultra DMX Pro, runs about $200. Um, also, uh, Entech makes a two universe, and both of these are USB or they have ArtNet versions too. I suggest either the Entech or the uh, DMX King interfaces. You'll find cheaper ones on Amazon on that, but one of the big drawbacks is they don't have optical isolation. So in other words, if you're using one of the cheaper interfaces and you happen to send some um, static electricity or something down a DMX line, can very easily blow out a chip. Or if a light sends some surge down a line, can e easily blow out the chip and then your interface is no good. These are a little bit more expensive, but they're a little bit more rugged and durable. And I've had a great experience with them. They, they work fine. Uh, so let's get on and take a look real quick at the software. So when you start the software up, I just have a kind of a demo program up here I did for a middle school that I typically do uh, lighting for. And um, well, let's take a look at the inputs out. The tabs are down the bottom, which is a little unusual, but you'll get used to it. So inputs, outputs. Once you've plugged in your USB or your out or your ArtNet interface, you just go for here you, in here and you look for it and you uh, click um, output. And then it gets assigned to the output. Um, you can also get input in here if you want to do that. One of the neat features about this program also is you can use uh, MIDI control devices to interface. So if you'd like a tactile surface like with sliders, you can find any kind of a MIDI control slider interface and use that to actually move controls and uh, turn lights off and on and adjust and that kind of thing. I could show you that in a later uh, uh, video, but for right now we're just going to kind of run through here. So that's your inputs outputs page, real easy to understand. Fixtures, um, I have a whole bunch of fixtures put in here, a lot of incandescent, but I also have some LED PARs in here, um, and I actually stuck in two moving lights. I normally don't have these at that middle school, but I thought I'd just throw them in there for the demo this so you could see a few things. Um, adding fixtures is really, really simple. You click on the plus, you select the manufacturer, the drop down menu comes in, you decide which uh, light you're going to use, it automatically populates over here, you tell it the address and the quantity, and if you need an address gap, and it's that easy, it just plugs them in. And then, uh, they don't have a, a palettes like you do have in some lighting programs, but it's similar. What you do then, you go over to your groups, and you select groups of lights and put them in groups. So I have some downstage blue lights here, one, two, three, four, five, and I put them in one group so I can access them quickly, or downstage reds, or stage right front of house, and it'll show me over here what lights I've assigned to that. Uh, creating groups is really easy too, I just say plus. I go through my list of lights here, select which ones I want to be in the group, give it a group name, and away we go, and you've created the groups. So that's pretty much the fixtures function. Now, the way that you do um, see, uh, lighting on this with this software is you create scenes, which you then later on can plug into a queue list. So as you can see here, I have a, a number of scenes. Some of them I've saved from an older show, and some of them, uh, this show is actually done for Adam's Family Jr. So I have a bunch of different scenes that I've created here for Adam's Family. And if I click on one, it brings it up, tells me what lights I have used to put into that scene. And I can go to channels, groups here, and it shows me some different things. Um, again, I can click over here and it showed me my channels groups. So this is where your groups come in. If you've assigned groups, you can control groups of lights here using this, which is a lot easier than doing individual. 
but you can go in if you click on all fixtures and you can go right down the row here and adjust all of your individual lighting if you want to. A little more tedious that way. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can start with the groups and then, up, then go over to individuals and if there's any individual light that you need to tweak a little bit for your scene you can do that and uh, just save it and this these will appear on stage it will turn the lights on unless you click the eyeball which says that you don't want to see it on stage but if you want to work live and want to see these and uh, basically uh, create your scenes one of the neat things about this is you can do a collection so you can take like say your blue pars let's take a look at this collection here this collection here which I call open house is a collection of three different scenes it's my backstage lights that I needed on for the actors my house curtain warmers and also some work lights that I need to be on stage so this was pre-show rather than creating a whole new queue I just pick, picked out three scenes and I put them together in what I call open house and that's what we call a, a collection so it's a neat feature feature of this now a little unusual uh, the way that you uh, once you've created your scene so you kind of plan plan ahead for the show you create your scenes that you're going to need you go in and create what we call a chaser now in um, a chaser normally would be in um, the DJ world where it would progress through a bunch of lighting scenes and just kind of loop back uh, keep continuously looping forward through there but uh, what we do is create a chaser and then we change the whole times and duration to infinity and you just you just plug in your scenes and you actually create a cue list so I will have a video to explain how to do this but it's uh, it's relatively easy to do um, and it works very very well um, let's take a look at the other button down here shows I'm not using this at all you can actually create a totally automated show where scenes are brought up in certain times and don't need that for this show because I need to be able to click the go button according to whether the actors are remembering their lines or how quickly they're saying their lines or how slowly they're saying the lines all right one of the neatest for, uh, features of this software is the virtual console you can set up a console to look the way that you want it to look whatever sliders that you want on there um, you can use buttons uh, any kind of controls you can use knobs and uh, we have different kind of frames and I'll show you that really quickly so what I've created up here is a bunch of sliders that I can control groups of lights with and I've assigned them to groups of lights and um, uh, what I simply do is click on this which means now I am in live mode so when I raise these up I am turning on my apron lights and I can turn on lights now from here now I can't do individual lights from here so again that's where you might want to do this in the functions but I get, there's several ways to work with this program you can create your scenes using the functions menu if you want to do this you can go in here and just adjust them that way and then I can click on this button here and it will ask me to give this new scene I've created a name and then save it and I can save it to a button automatically if I want to too uh, so I could actually after I've created a scene I could save it to one of these buttons down here and actually be able to run through the show using buttons um, another thing I'd like to show you really quickly you do have uh, DMX output up here so we have the DMX view that looks like this so when I raise my apron stage right if you notice it's a group of lights and you can see them going up here or what you can do is you can create a grid now it doesn't have the um, live on stage view where you can see the angle of the lights and that kind of thing although I think it is possible to interface this with a with a um, a light program would that would show you that personally I just run this because I want to know what lights are coming off and on and it helps me so if I'm doing my apron stage right apron stage left I can see that those are my apron lights that I put in the grid and I can see them coming on if I want my downstage blues to be on and my upstage blues I can see those lights coming on okay so just a brief explanation of that so this works like a kind of a group controller here that I can run um, I can also if I wanted to actually run a show from buttons I can create the scenes back in the functions menu that we showed you and then tie those uh, functions into buttons so my full stage warm and I have this on a three second fade up and three second fade down you can see the lights coming in and then I can progress to uh, full stage bright it's a little hard to tell intensities here because there's no intensity it does show you intensity but it's hard uh, to tell the difference between that house curtain warmers you see some of these fading out you'll see the house curtain warmers going down to dim 
uh, downstairs curtain bright. You'll see some downstairs lights coming on, so forth. So you can actually, if you wanted to, run the entire show from just pressing buttons. Or uh, most of you used to doing cue lists. So uh, here we go. Here's that cue list that I can I created, and uh, all we simply do is click on go here, start, and it will start going through my cues. The nice thing with the cue list is once you've got your scenes in here, you can go in and edit the times. You can change the fade in and fade out times. So if you want to do a split fade, um, you can do that. Um, all kinds of options with that. And um, from here, I just progress by hitting the go forward button. And I just move forward through my cues, and my lighting changes over here. I can watch what I'm doing. Typically, when I do this at the middle school, I'll set this up for a student, and usually the only thing I have up for them is the cue list and this, so we can just kind of see how they're progressing through there. It works very, very, very well. So, okay. And finally, if you do want to, I'm just going to say uh, stop here. We stop that, and I'm going to say shut down. So I'm now I'm back in edit mode here. And again, you create this um, these widgets by just dra dragging and dropping, then assigning and creating your own virtual console on there. Um, they also have a simple desk feature over here. The simple desk will either show you all of the DMX addresses, but it's actually more handy to look at this as uh, groups or channels or assignments. So this is my front of house light A1 some front of house lights here, some backstage lights. Uh, if I slide down here, you can see that I have some ETC desire lights that are of our cafeteria. Um, you can see some, here's the moving lights that I put in just to give you a view of that. Uh, a nice thing about this program, a lot of times when you're running moving lights, you got to change gobos. And, gosh, I don't remember what gobo number that is. It includes your gobo. So if I want like gobo seven, I just drop down here gobo seven and it's already been pre-programmed to be what uh, a value it has to be, be to bring up Gobo 7. And I can say color wheel, I need an orange on Gobo 7. Um, and now pan and tilt, you can do this. And this would be more like somebody that a DJ that's, you're used to running like a champs board or a whole hog board or something like that. And we can save these lighting scenes that we've done to playbacks and then we can play them back which would be something more typical of that kind of thing so if you're used to that kind of lighting board you can absolutely go in to do that create your scenes save them on separate on different playbacks and then play them back that way um, I'm going to drop these out here make sure I click the X to release them so they're no longer lighting up I'll go back to the virtual console for one moment show you something really cool on here so one of the things about the virtual console uh, I created this uh, Chauvet Q-Beam light here and um, same thing here. I have drop downs where I can go color, orange, uh, gobo. I'd like a gobo three. Uh, do I want the prism engaged? Yes or no. Uh, shutter. What are some of the options? I have close, open, strobe, open, pulse strobe, and random slow strobe. So I don't want to do any strobing. Uh, I can do overall control. It tells me like some of the controls, but right now I don't want any function there. I can do overall dimmer. So the brightness. And then here, you can use your mouse to control pan. So you move the light around on stage where you want it to be, which is really, really nice that way rather than just using sliders. Now, if you want to get a little more fine control, yes, I can just do my vertical using this, or I can use my left and right using this. But again, I can start off by dragging it around, then I can tweak it a little bit using this in positions. This is nice here. This limits the travel of the, of the light. So when you get started programming and you know that if I go too far off to this corner the lights really not on the stage anymore I can adjust the size of my stage so that when I'm programming here I'm not like running off the side of the stage so now when I go to move things around it's only going to go as far out as I allow it to go kind of a really really neat feature in there um, so let me show you now as if you don't want to do any of the programming I have created a simple basic um, 100 channel rig here for you. I'm going to get out of uh, live mode. I'll open up, bring it up real quick, and bring it to show you that. I believe it's this one here. Okay, and um, you're welcome to go to my website and download this. I'll include some information about this. What I've actually done here is created kind of like a standard old-fashioned light board. I have 50 channels. 
of uh, DMX lighting here. And if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, we can just put this in run mode, bring these up, turn on certain lights, and then go, now I have uh, 51 through 100, turn on certain lights, and then I just go over here, click on my functions, save this as a scene, give it a scene name, away I go. And then again, go back and readjust there. Then, I'm going to just bring these back down to zero. So this, those of you that are used to an old-fashioned light board, I did this for you folks. You can work it that way. The third page is once you've created your scenes, you can assign them to buttons, or you can do the functions and scenes and then go in and save them to a cue list. I'm going to do a little bit of a, a um, separate tutorial on each aspect of this, but I just wanted to show you that this is available on my website. You can download it. It saves you all the uh, uh, problems of going through and creating the construction of this and it's there and you can get right into uh, creating your scenes right away and saving them. All right, any questions feel free to email me. Um, I'll have you go to my website and uh, check that out. Just look, look below here in the description and you'll see the uh, link to my website.